All right, so close your eyes for a second. Picture this. October 19th, 2024. We're just two weeks out. Two weeks from Election Day, the presidential race. Oh, it is on Donkey Kong. And for today's deep dive, we're diving headfirst into a Donald Trump campaign rally up in Pennsylvania. Classic. Yeah. You might be thinking, okay, campaign rally, what's the big deal? It's October. This is like standard political fare. Yeah. But trust me on this one. It gets interesting. You hit the nail on the head when you say political theater. Because you see, these elections, they're more than just like a policy debate. It's yeah. all about crafting a narrative, right? Tapping into those raw emotions and creating these these unspoken bonds with voters. Totally. And this rally, this rally we're about to unpack, it's seriously like a masterclass in, in that kind of strategy. It's like textbook, almost. Yeah. Okay, so let's lay it out. The scene is set. Mm. Trump's in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, home of, you know, golf legend Arnold Palmer. Right. So yeah. you'd expect a shout out, right? Maybe a little story about Palmer's impact on the sport. Yeah, you'd think so. I mean, it's like the obvious move, right? Exactly. Yeah. But instead of going the predictable route, Trump just veers, like way off script into, get this, a 12-minute long story about Arnold Palmer's, well, physique. Really? Oh, yeah. He's like quoting golfers who showered with Palmer back in the day and were like, whoa. Oh, wow. I'm not kidding. No, no, I, I believe it. It's just that, you know, on the surface, it's like, where is he going with this? But OK, zoom out for a second. We're in La Trobe. Arnold Palmer isn't just some random famous golfer here, right? This is a hometown hero, like a legend. Oh, yeah. An icon. So when Trump's going on and on about Palmer being all man, he's not just like telling a funny story. He's tapping into something much deeper. You know, the shared history, shared values. It's strategic. Oh, 100 percent. He's speaking directly to a very specific audience here. It's like he's speaking their language. Yeah. You know, cutting through all the noise and connecting on on a really visceral level. Exactly. And that's what makes it so effective. So it's not just what he's saying. It's how he's saying it. Mm -hmm. And speaking, speaking to a specific audience, the article I read also mentioned that Trump went after Kamala Harris pretty hard. Yeah. And and he really honed in on her stance on fracking, which is interesting. Huge issue in Pennsylvania. Oh, absolutely. Huge jobs, the economy. I mean, so much of it in that part of the country is tied to fracking. So by going after Harris on this, he's really trying to to solidify his base. Right. Yeah. Especially the, those working class voters who, you know, they might be worried about their jobs or livelihoods. He's painting her as this out of touch elitist, someone who just like doesn't get it. Doesn't understand their way of life, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And it's all about framing. Okay. So we've got this whole unconventional tribute to Arnold Palmer, which is, let's be real, a very strategic move to connect with local values. We've got the targeted jabs at Kamala Harris, clearly aimed at shoring up his support with a key voting block. Oh. Uh. And then, and then he brings up the assassination attempts. Oh, wow. Yeah. Caught me off guard a little bit, to be honest. And here's where it gets really, really interesting because yeah. he doesn't just mention them, right? He he connects them back to Arnold Palmer. I was going to say. Like, the article literally quotes him saying that even his security detail looks like the golfer. I think he said something like, they look like Arnold. Can't look better than Arnold. Classic. So classic. But there's a method to this, right? He's subtly reinforcing this idea that he understands them, their world, even down to their heroes. It's like he's weaving together all these different things like Arnold Palmer, fracking, assassination attempts. And somehow he's creating this cohesive narrative that really, really lands with his base. Exactly. It's, it's almost like political theater, isn't it? It is. Like every word, every gesture, the location, it's all so carefully chosen to evoke a very specific emotion, you know? Absolutely. Okay, so let's recap for a second. We've got playing to a specific audience with the Arnold Palmer bit. Mm -hmm. We've got strategic framing with the Harris attacks. And then this whole other layer of like weaving in those personal experiences, the assassination attempts, and it all just it blends together. It's masterful, like honestly. Yeah, and it's like you said, it's political theater, right? Oh, absolutely. But it's it's not just the words. It's the whole thing. It's the whole atmosphere. The energy. This wasn't some, you know, perfectly lit it's staged speech in a TV studio. Yeah. You know, this was a rally. In an airport hangar. In an airport hangar. Yeah. So you've got that raw energy, that feeling of we're all in this together. Exactly. And it just it plays so perfectly into Trump's like persona. Right. Yeah. The outsider, the man of the people. Oh, 100 percent. Like he's not afraid to break the rules, break the rules to say what's on his mind. Yeah. Even if it rocks the boat, rocks the boat. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because in that setting with that crowd 
it's not about being polite, right? It's about it's authenticity. Authenticity, being real, showing those voters, hey, I'm one of you. Yeah. Not one of those suits. suits. Um, was... The elites, exactly. Exactly. And it, it and this is something we see over and over with him, right? Oh yeah. This this use of symbolism, spectacle. For creating that that connection. That connection. The emotional connection. Yeah. Which is so powerful. Remember that whole drain the swamp thing? This is like is, is it in action. In action. An extension of that. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the Arnold Palmer strategy, the going after Kamala Harris. But this next part, this is where it gets really interesting, at least to me. Okay. Because in the middle of this whole rally, Trump's like, oh, yeah, and I talked to Netanyahu. Whoa. Benjamin Netanyahu. Oh, okay. On the phone, right? Bringing in the big guns. But it's just so fascinating how he... Weaves it in. Weaves it in to the narrative. It's like a, it's like a side quest in a video game. It is. It's a side quest. You're like, wait, what are we doing here? But it all it all comes back, you know? It always comes back. It always comes back. He even throws in, like, a direct quote from Netanyahu. He's like, Netanyahu told me, it's incredible what's happened. Wow. And it's like, boom. We're not just in Pennsylvania anymore. The world stage. We're on the world stage talking to world leaders. Exactly. And that's the play here, right? He's reinforcing this image. I'm a strong leader. World leaders call me. Exactly. They call me when things get tough. Biden, not so much. It's that. It's that comparison. That comparison. Without without saying it. Without saying it. Yeah. It's like Biden's weak, but he doesn't actually say it. It, Implication is there. It's it's masterful. It's so subtle, you know? It's like you almost don't even realize it's happening. He just seeps in. Exactly. Consciously. It's brilliant. It is brilliant. But also kind of terrifying when you think about it. It is. It makes you think. (laughs) You think. Because it's like, okay, we've got. Speaking directly to a specific audience, the Arnold Palmer thing, check. Strategic framing, going after Harris on fracking, check. Using those, those really strong visuals, the symbolism. The spectacle. The spectacle. And now we've got, like, international relations. It's like his his campaign playbook. It's a master class. It's a master class. It really is. It really is. Political communication. communication. Yeah, and it just shows you how much thought goes into every single thing oh yeah it's not just off the cuff no even if it seems like it even if it seems like it and that's what's so scary exactly and that's why we have to be so careful right we do we can't just take things at face value anymore we have to to think critically about everything we see in here especially when it comes to politics it's like you almost have to admire the strategy of it all right like it or not you gotta hand it to them yeah, you do. Because this rally, it's the perfect example of how he blends like this intuitive understanding of his base with like a really savvy awareness of, of how the media works. Oh, yeah, for sure. And let's be real. The story here, it's not about, you know, the finer points of his policies or anything like that. It's about those those moments that will grab the headlines. Exactly. The Arnold Palmer story, the Netanyahu name drop. These are sound bites. Right? Totally. Made to be tweeted, shared, debated. Exactly. And that's the point. Whether people are, you know, praising him or or ripping him apart, it doesn't matter. He's still the center of attention. Like they say, all press is good press. Right. Yeah. To some extent. But it also says a lot about, you know, how we consume political information these days. Everything is so fast, so so fragmented. Yeah, it's all sound bites and headlines. Exactly. And it's often driven by, you know, gut reactions rather than any kind of like thoughtful analysis. So for our listeners out there, trying to make sense of it all, you know, trying to cut through the noise. What's the what's the takeaway here? Don't just take things at face value. Question everything. Ask yourself, why are they saying this? Why now? Why in this way? It's like we always say, look beyond the headline. Exactly. Dig deeper, you know? Think about who they're trying to reach with this message, what their real motives might be. Because once you start looking for those hidden layers, it's like, whoa. The world just gets a whole lot more interesting, right? It does. It really, really does. And that that's what this deep dive is all about. Thanks for exploring with us.